time was 14 14. Well, we just put that on there for two minutes. Okay. So we did keep score. Keep score. Okay. Yeah, we just, uh, I've learned that um, if you don't want people to go to the ground, then you can't make it competitive. Yeah. I want both things to happen, but it's just asking too much to be keeping score and being competitive and then telling guys not to finish. So we just try to manufacture that for the for the two minute situation. You want to open with the, kind of the thought on on how today and the last fourteen opportunities have gone for for you and the squad. Yeah, first thing is we're just uh, you know it's not perfect in terms of health. There's a couple guys that you know um, are going to have sort of long term, um, and you know that that part of it you just hate football. Um, and then overall, just how our guys practiced, you know, we were, um, you know, very healthy, um, you know, minus, minus those two. Um, so, uh, so thank, thankful for that. And, uh, you know, the guys that um, are more of a long-term situation, uh, you know, both have really bright futures. Um, so I'll say that. And then, I, I mean, I started, you know, before we started spring ball, I love spring ball. You know, um, I love it. Uh, the way that uh, we develop with the, you know, 15 practice opportunities and, uh, you know, the amount of meetings that we're able to do. Um, I mean, it's just tangible. You, rec you record everything on video so you can see, tangibly see guys developing and getting better. Um, and I love that. You know, I love that, that every single guy was coached in our scheme on defense, on special teams, and on offense. And um, so it's been a really good spring. We also had to kind of come together as a team, at, you know, 20-plus new guys um, in January. And so um, I think our team did a great job of uh, welcoming those guys. And then the guys that we've taken are all, um, thanks a lot, are all, you know, Eastern Michigan guys. And so that's, that's happened you know, really well and quickly, but nonetheless, when you got new people, you got to come together and become a team, and still got a ways to go before you know end of August. But um, really, really pleased with that. Our coaching staff, I'm fired up about. Um, uh, just we're having a lot of fun. Um, really good people who, you know, are really good at what they do, and and so that's been good as well. Blake, coach, um, I want to first just ask you kind of about the, court, the revamped quarterback room. I know yeah. we've you know, lost Austin Smith, Cameron McCoy, um, bring in guys. Cam was out there today. Yeah, I've seen him out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there a little bit. He's going to have a great baseball season. Yeah. So um, just talk to me just about, you know, what you've seen so far. I know there's only, you know, 15 opportunities, like you said, but just what you've seen so far from, you know, the new court, the new guys in that room and, and you know, the development and the progress, um, especially, you know, with, Chase Stuckey, he's a new guy coming in, new face, and Drew Viotto as well. Yeah, and then mention two of the three, right? And then Cole Snyder. Yeah, so Cole, those those yeah. three guys are all new in January. Um, Chase came as an early enrollee, so he's sort of getting ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Drew transferred in, and so did Cole. Um, and so here's here's the thing in terms of evaluating quarterbacks when they're trying to learn a whole new system, mm -hmm. right? You've got to just be able to see like the raw skill. Uh, and the leadership ability and who, what their personalities are like, you know, and then understand that, um, I mean, you're learning a whole new foreign language with new people, and, you know, it's, it's different. Football's football, and football's not football, right? It's done differently. So um, what I can tell you is that, that we've been able to see what we need to see, knowing that we're going to be in really good shape. We feel really good about that. Our, I mean, are we ready to, to play a game right now? No, we're not. But uh, um, we get, you know, 25 more practice opportunities plus the two hours that we get during the summer, you know. Um, and so we'll have them ready. And uh, so we're excited about that. It, it, it's gone really well. They're made of the right stuff, and, and, and they're talented. And talk to me just a little bit about the defense. I know the defensive line today was awesome. Um, they were buzzing and so um, just talk to me just about them um, I know you guys you know lose Chase and Joe behind the defensive line and the linebacker group but you know how do you feel like those gaps like how, how are those gaps being filled yeah um, and, and, and just taking those guys and you know implementing and 
them into you know kind of just that that role that that's being lost. Yeah. So starting with the D line, mm -hmm. you know, we had four guys uh, going for like the vast majority of spring, which is tough. Mm -hmm. A week ago, we had a 94 play scrimmage, and we had you know four guys taking. Not all of those reps, because you know we can get into some different uh, uh, personnel groupings where you know some of those guys are off the field. But nonetheless, I mean they just took um, a a ton of reps, um, and so their development was you know again phenomenal. I mean the more you do it, the better you better get. Um, and uh, so and that was a kind of our our, our younger group or guys that uh, were role players and some guys who didn't play much at all, and so it was super helpful for them. Um, you know, Melvin didn't practice uh, much um, the last couple of weeks, but got to play some today, and you know he's a good player for us. You know, and then and then Peyton, we've kind of held um, the last uh, last couple of weeks, and you know we think he's um, you know a really good player. So our interior D line, um, and then Dylan Shelton, you may have uh, mm -hmm. recognized him. Uh, just told him that he had he had he had a really good spring. Mm -hmm. um, and Winter, you know, coming in from University of Indianapolis, I don't know if he was totally ready for DMAX Winter. Um, and uh, so there were some times where we were like, uh, how's this going to go? And then as a football player in the spring, he really, really showed up. So uh, excited about him. And then, you know, our defensive ends room, we were so banged up. It was one of the sort of masterpiece jobs Coach Needham had done with, um, you know, moving – Justo, Justin Jefferson, down to a defensive end from linebacker, and obviously Joey made it through, and and uh, you know Jaden Games played some, but now um, you know we've got some guys who are more healthy, and we have a couple of guys that we're still expecting to join us that are on the team, um, and so we just had more guys at defensive end, and, and um, you know Messiah Blair, who was phenomenal as a scout team player his freshman year, is going to be a force, so uh, you know Carter Evans is going to. Be coming back, and and we really um, have high hopes for Sterling to be able to come back as well. So, um, at linebacker, you know Kendrick Nowling and uh, Bryce E. Luke, right? Who was a freshman this last year? Or the guys were here, and then we brought in four guys, and um, you know we we hit on all four of those guys. I mean, it's just it's a really it's good. It's really good um, in in all ways. I mean, they're learning, but they're great guys and. And uh, they're really good football players, you know. So, you know, we talk about we lost a lot of production, you know, at linebacker, you know, a lot. Um, and so, you know, we knew that was going to happen. That happens every year, you know, at some places where you guys go to the NFL or just were unbelievable players. And, and uh, you kind of feels like, you know, life's over or you're never going to be able to, you know, play again. And, you know, you're developing guys and recruiting and, you um, uh, you know, you make it work. So um, we feel feel really good about our, our linebacker group. And then special teams, obviously, you know, you guys had one of the best special teams in the country last year. Um, how do you kind of build on that and carry that over into this next season? Um, obviously, that's not, you know, a goal to be, you know, best special teams. But um, how do you kind of just, you know, carry that, that momentum and, and you know that honor into into next year and, and, and build on it. Well, I th I think that you know it starts probably <clears throat> you know with the with the coaches and then with the specialists themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, Grant Kirshner is a great coach and a great special teams coach, um, <clears throat> and uh, you know he was doing a graduate you know assistantship here. Um, and so that time, you know, comes to an end. And so he's still with us and has been an amazing help. And he's going to have a phenomenal career. I hope I get to work with him again. Um, and so we hired Coach uh, Casey Teagarden. Uh, and Grant McKinnis has been a part of that too and was with us last year and is helping in the transition and will be with us as a specialist coach this coming year. And uh, it's a great coaching staff. And Coach Teagarden... Um, has taken what we were doing and has made us even better. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Um, he's been awesome. You can ask, whoever you bring in next, ask him because mm -hmm. they're involved in special teams in some way. Um, and then when you've got Mitch Tomasek, you know, and Jesus 
coming back. I mean, Birdsong, uh, you know, is hopefully going to be on an NFL roster here uh, in the next weeks or months. Um, and so we have two young guys battling out that are doing a good job. But, you know, our, our starting punter and our starting kicker are, are super, super talented and, and great people. And so with the coaches and then, you know, with the specialists, the, th the third thing would just be our culture. I mean, everybody in our program understands that special teams, turnovers, takeaways, win and lose ball games. And uh, our best players want to be on special teams um, and are on special teams. Um, and so I do think we're going to continue to get better. And it is a goal to be the best, okay. you know, in, in terms of the special teams, to take it uh, very seriously, and, and we're good at it. Awesome. And my last question, um, since this might be my last time talking to you since before I graduate. Um, Are you graduating? I is, am graduating. Oh, yes, man. So, um, You're I good just, at what you do. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I Are you wanted, continuing? Yes, yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to ask you um, what, you know, makes you wake up every day and, and – you know, want to be a coach, what what makes you, you know, get up every day and tick? Like, obviously, you know, football, and everyone loves football, you know, I hope, but um, what is it about, you know, this team, this program, this university that, you know, allows you to wake up every day with that same passion and those same goals and that same mindset? Yeah, it's an awesome question. Um, you know, it's, it is, it's an awesome question. There's, I mean, there's kind of a couple different directions that I can go with that. Um, I don't know, outside of, you know, my relationship, you know, with God and uh, being a husband and a father, I just think I was put on this earth to coach college football. Um, and it's, it's the people, you know. I love our staff and I love our guys. Um, and I love um, believing in people and believing in – going out to be able to achieve something that none of us could do on our own. Um, and like, I actually believe it and I believe in the guys and I love just the process of seeing these young guys just go for it and get better and to believe and to achieve and to, to come together and actually love each other and for coaches to, you know, pour into their lives. I mean, you know, I, I absolutely love that. And then when you start talking about Eastern Michigan, you know, there's, Almost everybody said that we couldn't do it here, okay? And I appreciate everybody's honesty. Um, and we're doing it. And I'm not going to tell you that we've done it, uh, but, you know, we're doing it. Um, and, you know, when I, when I say that, I'm not trying to say that in a, uh, you know, um, I don't know, uh, in any kind of uh, self promotion kind of thing. That's not what I mean. Um, just, again, a part of a lot of people who have really believed and taken on the challenge and, of making this program super special. Um, and because of, you know, the, the people, I, I really believe that, you know, we're going to be able to achieve and continue to achieve things that people said wouldn't happen here. And uh, that absolutely, you know, gets me going by the time my second foot hits the ground in the morning. No question. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Uh, Coach, a couple questions on quarterbacks. Uh, you have Snyder, of course, who come in from Buffalo. He's got years of experience, not just at Buffalo, but at Rutgers, too. This isn't the first time you brought in a quarterback who has a lot of FBS experience. Tyler Wiegers, Taylor Powell, they both had success after they transferred here. You know, how comforting is it to have a guy that's had experience just practicing with other FBS teams, right? and then having to have that knowledge and to be able to leave that here. What sort of comfort does that bring for you in this offense? Yeah, he, he's a, a, a lot of comfort. He's a vet. <clears throat> have you talked to him yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's um, yeah, he's a mature veteran. And, you know, like Jace, our freshman, is going to be really good. Mm -hmm. You know, he just – it's a process. Of learning and going through it, you know, and, and Jace is going to be really good, you know, talking about sort of, you know, a last year guy and a first year guy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Cole, um, he's got a great presence, he's got a great mind, he's super serious, um, and uh, yeah, he's a really good fit for our program. Great, lots of comfort because of that. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of people are really excited to see, you know, Drew and Jace once they 
you know, grow up into the system and all that. Oh, yeah. But the two guys that have stuck around, you know, you have Jeremiah, who I don't, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think he's on a scholarship, or at least wasn't when he entered. And then you also have Ike, who you know didn't exactly have the best first year last year. They both looked pretty comfortable. It looked like Jeremiah was doing really, really well. Had some nice balls today. What have you seen out of them to be able to, you know, take whatever they knew of last year and to grow into, you know, this spring season that they've shown? Yeah, no, I'm really glad that you asked because those are our two, our, our two vets, right? Jeremiah's been here the, the longest, but um, Ike has the most experience returning, right? And uh, was our backup last year and, and got to play some. And he's made of all the right stuff. And he has handled, you know, three new guys coming in, uh, you know, really well. And they're all competing. Uh, and, and we love Ike. Um, I don't know if you've gotten to know him, but he's like another great human being. Um, and then I'll tell you, Jeremiah Salem, um, you know, like today, I didn't think that he had necessarily a, a great day, but he's had a great spring. He's had a great spring. You know, um, there is a lot to be said, you know, and I'm going to say this the way I'm saying it, to being somewhere and sticking with it and learning and going through the process and knowing the program and developing relationships and then all of a sudden the third and fourth time in terms of the year that you're doing it, like you know it and you get good at it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the whole time, the whole team is behind uh, Jeremiah, for sure. Uh, my last, because Blake did such a great job. Uh, the offensive line, of course, is seeing you know a lot of turnover. The last couple of years, you've had Brian Dooley and City Sal, who both played like 50 plus years through their career. Now that you don't have that sort of luxury, yeah. you know, how is you know trying to find five stable guys to start and then find another, you know, however many it takes to be above the line to for you to feel comfortable to say, hey, you can play O line for us. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. I, I'm going to tell you honestly, like, and I was saying this to, to some folks earlier today. Experience-wise, we have Mickey, right, who played last year, played a little the, the year before, um, and then Brock Roman and Carson Lee, you know, both have played, um, neither for the entire season. Uh, Brock, by the way, just hugged me and said, man, I made it through a spring. I mean, when you think about it, like, that's yeah. just awesome, right? Um, and so we have, you know, very little playing experience coming back. But I'll tell you, Coach Coughlin, um, we have some really talented um, young and some older guys that we've brought in, uh, offensive linemen that we're super excited about. Uh, we, we really are. Um, it's, a, it's a really good group. Um, I called, you know, the guys that are finishing up now their second year, the amoeba, you know, they were part of a class two years ago, and they just all have were together from day one and have just stayed together. And those guys are going to become the soul of our football team as they continue to mature and get older. But uh, like Blake Buster uh, didn't play the last maybe week and a half or whatever. Um, he's the transfer from Wayne State. He had a really good spring. Uh, super excited about him. Mac Indestead hurt his finger last camp and was out all last year and we think could have played, could have competed to play last year. So he's healthy and has had a really good spring. Um, you didn't see Chris Mayo today. He's got, you know, an injury that's not long-term or anything like that, you know, when he played some last year. Uh, and then uh, Doji Dawe, um, you know, he wasn't out there either today. Uh, so I think I just listed three of four tackles that you guys didn't get to see today that, you know, are super talented, you know, and – you know, it's kind of the same thing, you know, on the inside. I'm not going to go through every single guy. but So not a ton of experience, um, but we are in no way, you know, feeling as though, like, we're not going to have a good offensive line. We think we're going to have a super athletic, long, uh, tough offensive line. Thank you. Yep. Done? You did a great job. We're going to start Yeah. We're good. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank